Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and in this tutorial I want to talk about Comprehensive Abacus Packet Chapter 11 Example 1 Damage Analysis of Tensile Test Specimen How to ask your video related questions Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We will try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. New Abacus users who want to develop their modeling skills faster in their projects can request user-oriented online and offline services. Subsequently, we offer step-by-step -step guidance, tutoring, and consultancy regarding their problems. The online service includes online sessions and the offline service includes creating special tutorials. In addition, a combination of the two can be requested. This is the table of content for example 1 of chapter 11. Uh, here uh, I'm gonna talk about methods for damage analysis in FE models. Um, we have two general uh, methods. One based on fracture mechanics and the other one based on continuum damage mechanics. And continuum damage mechanics, uh, its abbreviation is CDM. Um, in the fracture mechanics, um, we have two kinds of cracks. First, a stationary crack, which means the crack will not propagate during the analysis. And the other one is propagating crack, which means that the crack can propagate during the analysis. And we analyze the stationary crack using the contour integral method and XFEM. Also, we can analyze the propagating crack using XFEM, CZM, and VCCT techniques. CZM is the abbreviation of cohesive zone method or cohesive zone model. XFEM is the abbreviation of extended finite element method and VCCT is the abbrevi abbreviation of virtual crack closure technique. Um, this uh, method is uh, older and also most of the time it is not used in the industrial projects. But these two methods and also this one, uh, they are used in the industrial projects and in the abacus course for industry, which I will give in the future, I will use contour integral method and XFEM to analyze the uh, pressure vessels uh, and uh, to analyze the crack propagation and crack initiation in the pressure vessels. The other approach is based on CDM or continuum damage mechanics. And uh, if I want to give you examples, I can mention Hashin damage for composites, uh, Hashin damage model, or ductile damage model, shear damage model, and Johnson Cook damage model. Um, uh, in this course, we will use Johnson Cook damage, and also we will talk about ductile damage. Um, in this course, uh, we don't cover fracture mechanics because um, it's uh, very complex and also um, we don't have enough time to uh, talk about uh, fracture mechanics. Um, in this chapter we will focus on Johnson Cook damage and also I will give you some notes about ductile damage according to a paper. And um, we have uh, two types of damage propagations. Um, here, uh, I want to talk about damage initiation strain or uh, epsilon init. Damage initiation strain 
or epsilon in it is a function of temperature, stress triaxiality, strain rate, and load angle. All of uh, these three parameters are implemented in the Johnson Cook damage model, but the load angle is not uh, included in the uh, Johnson Cook damage model. And also, we don't cover uh, load angle dependency and load angle explanations in this chapter. If you want to study it yourself, here I have put a paper, sorry, here, load angle effect on root locus. Um, you can study this paper yourself. It is related to the effect of load angle on the um, damage initiation um, stress, a strain. It's a good paper, but it is uh, complex. It is complex, so I don't mention it in this chapter, but uh, I have put it for your self-study and uh, if you are interested about studying uh, this effect. Um, I have done this simulation previously, this simulation, and I have verified uh, this curve, I have verified this curve, and uh, for one of these specimens, I have forgotten which one I have uh, verified, but uh, I have obtained this curve. Um, it's a good paper, but uh, I told you it's a little complex. And um, in chapter 6, I have mentioned a stress triaxiality. Um, if I go to chapter 6 slides, um, chapter 6. Um, Where is it? I have written it in chapter six slides. I mentioned uh, where is it? Maybe, uh -huh. maybe it's in this, uh, because when I modified the slides, I uh, resent it. Uh -huh. Maybe it's here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's here. Um, this is the mathematical uh, definition of a stress triaxiality, it is minus P divided by von Mises stress. What is P? It is the hydrostatic pressure. And also we have this formula for von Mises stress. And for the tensile test, um, this is the stress tensor of the tensile test in the central part or the gauge length of the tensile specimen. And here I have calculated P and von Mises stress and here you can see the final value of stress, triaxial, stress triaxiality. For the tensile test, for the flat and simple tensile test, the value of stress triaxiality is 0 0.33 and also if you remember I used abacus and by using explicit solver, I, I uh, obtained the same um, the same value. If you remember, also I used 
I plotted it because in Abacus standard uh, that option doesn't work. It doesn't for, uh, work for Abacus standard in my version. Maybe in the newer versions it works, I don't know. But in my version it only works in the uh, when you use explicit solver and I used it and I um, obtained this value if you remember and uh, that's it um, also for the fracture of a ductile metal we have some famous damage initiation criteria for example ductile damage shear damage and Johnson cook damage uh, Ductile damage models the ductile fracture due to the uh, nucleation, growth, and coalescence of voids. Shear damage models the shear fracture due to shear band localization. And Johnson Cook damage widely used in the impact, explosion, and machining simulations. Um, if you use Johnson Cook damage model, there is no need to use uh, these ones for impact analysis or machining simulation. But if you don't use Johnson Cook damage, you, may, you must use uh, both these models uh, simultaneously and um, to, to account for both the shear band localization and uh, the uh, nucleation growth and uh, coalescence of voids and uh, that's it um, but um, most of the people they only define ductile damage but it introduces some errors in the analysis and uh, it's better to use both the shear damage and ductile damage if you don't have the coefficients of Johnson Cook damage for your material for your specific material and the main reference of this paper is a calibration of ductile fracture properties of a cast aluminium alloy let me show you this paper um, this is the main reference of this chapter I will also send it to you to use it to uh, study it yourself okay Also, this paper I showed you previously, it is related to the study of the effect of load angle on the damage initiation strain. Uh, to to, um, to study the damage behavior of a material, of a ductile material, we must define, uh, we must create or produce different specimens. Um, here, uh, I want to show you uh, some of these uh, famous specimens, like notched round bar specimens. Round bar means that this is the axis of symmetry. Okay, this is the axis of symmetry of, the, of, uh, of these specimens. They are like this. No. Axis and for example they are like this.
it has it has axis of symmetry and uh, here you can see the notch and when the geometry of the notch differs then the stress triaxiality value in this section differs and so you can so each specimen gives you one point of the dependency of uh, uh, damage initiation strain to the stress triaxiality and here we have butterfly specimen also and this is the flat grooved plane strain specimen they are flat okay they are flat and uh, they are used in the paper for studying the effect of load angle um, also here you can uh, okay Hossein joined the class and here um, you can see the load displacement sorry uh, load displacement curves of the tensile test on the round bars in this round bar the radius of the notch is 1.5 millimeter in the other one it is 4.5 and also this is unnotched it has un it, it, it doesn't have any notch and um, you can see that fracture point differs okay this is because the change of stress triaxiality um, here uh, I'm gonna introduce you a very very important concept in the damage analysis it is root locus ut or root loci they name it root locus or root loci um, and now uh, I'm gonna talk about Johnson Cook damage model and uh, here uh, damage initiation strain is a function of temperature and strain rate and stress traxiality as I mentioned before and as you know in the mathematical formulation and means multiplication so damage initiation strain is a function of stress triaxiality multiplied by a function of strain rate multiplied by a function of temperature and is uh, transformed to multiplication okay and this is the Johnson Cook damage model to calculate the fracture strain. This is F1, this is F2, and this is F3. And theta hat has this formulation. Uh, transition temperature and melting temperature. Uh, most of the time, we set the transition temperature equal to the room temperature. For example, uh, it can be 20 centigrades or uh, 23 or 27. Most of the time we use 20 for the room temperature. And uh, in, the, in the next examples, I will use uh, Johnson Cook damage model to, um, to do... Um, to do some damage simulations and if you have any question about the Johnson Cook model or other explanations please ask because I want to go to the examples yes please please ask your question uh, I didn't get what is the temperature uh, transition uh -huh. Te I, I told you uh, we usually set the transition temperature equal to the room temperature. This is a general rule. 
they said the transition temperature equal to the room temperature. I, I, there is no proof for it. I cannot give you any specific explanation. This is a general rule in the articles. Um, they set the transition temperature equal to 20 or 25 uh, or 27 or 23. That's it. I don't have any uh, important uh, uh, explanation for that. <laughs> yes. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, is there any other question? Uh, so, if you don't have any other question, what is the time? Um, okay, um, I think we have time, uh, but um, I want to give you the break and um, because um, when if I go to the next um, part it is solving the example one so um then if if uh, if after it i give you or at the middle of it i give you the break we will have problem so at this point i give you the break for 15 minutes and then uh, please go back for solving the examples uh yes uh -huh, please have 20 minutes 20 minutes this time 20 minutes instead of 15 minutes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, please go back after 20 minutes. We have this table and we have the settings or characteristics of each of the models. Mo uh, model 5 is in 2D space, its time period is 0 0.1 and uh, first damage initiation parameter is 0 0.05 and displacement at failure is 0 0.6 and target displacement is 12. Uh, also you can see the settings of the other models. In this column I have also written the delta strain. Okay, I have also written the delta strain. You can see that the delta strain of some of them are different. Okay, the delta S strain is different because displacement at failure is different. And I told you delta S strain multiplied by characteristic length is equal to the displacement at failure. Most of the time I work with displacement at failure because it is a, a more a sensible uh, than um, fracture energy. Um, and if you see here, um, uh, in model 5, 6, 7 and 8, the changing parameter is time period. Between 7 and 9, D1 changes. Between 7 and 10, displacement at failure. Between 9 and 11, displacement at failure. Displacement at failure. And between 7 and 12, 2D and 3D. I mean the S space is changed and uh, we have uh, five uh, uh, we, we, we have five uh, categories of comparison okay five categories of comparison so I go back to Abacus I delete this model because if I don't delete it uh, this arrangement will be affected so uh, I delete it and uh, I save it, save as, save one, tensile damage. Okay. So here I create a copy from model one to the no sim. I name it uh, model five. Uh, no seam damage. Okay, model 5 to the no seam uh, damage. Okay, uh, here I'm gonna apply these uh, settings. 
Um, first of all, I go to the step module. The uh, step must be, must be replaced with dynamic explicit. And for model 5, its time period is 0 0.1. And I told you the mass scale is uh, the target time increment is 5 e minus 6. That's it. And in the property module, I must define density. Okay. Also in the mesh, the element type must be explicit. And uh, it is plain a strain. It's okay. And in the load. In the property, I define um, Johnson Cook damage. I set D1 equal to 0 0.05. Um, also from damage pattern point of view. Job 5, Job 6, Job 7, Job 9, oh sorry, Job 8. Um, you can see that in all of them, uh, they have similar damage pattern. It is oblique. It is oblique. And, um, but five and six are similar. Also, seven and eight are similar. Um, I don't have any important comment on it, but I only want to show you. Also, the region that failure happens is not important. The pattern is important, okay? For example, this pattern can happen here. But this configuration must happen. If the configuration changes, it is important. But if this happens here, it is not important. And... Um, let me combine the PQ and plastic strain. PQ S minus five. How to purchase packages or individual chapters? Each of the packages and individual chapters includes CAE, JNL, and IMP files, step-by-step -step tutorials with detailed explanations and investigation of the results, and slides and reference papers and standards. Packages specifications and payment details are provided in the video description. Also, you can pay the cost of the packages in two, three, or four installments according to your budget or income. In the future, updates will be provided for free for everybody who purchases each chapter or each package. The cost of each chapter or package will increase after each update for new buyers, but those who purchase the package would have endless access to all the upcoming updates. This will make the content up to date for new needs and new problems which must be solved via FE simulation. You can contact us using Telegram or WhatsApp, or you can send email to us. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp, and we can make special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high-quality simulations for your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. 
Also, we offer support in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis. And we have consulting services for MSc, PhD positions or job interviews. And we can help you to prepare the presentation of your simulation works. Now, I'm gonna suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.